today, we are going to make sure that our dinghy is level in, in alignment. And how we're gonna do that is we have this bright yellow twine, which we will run from this corner to the aft opposite corner, and then around the back to the other corner and then back up uh, to this corner. And the idea of that is, is that if we can make an X on both sides where the lines just touch at the center line of the boat, then if we then have that touching on and then loop it in the opposite direction and it touches on both sides, then we're in perfect alignment. If we're not in perfect alignment, uh, I put these two clamps on either side about equally distant from the front of the bow so that we can then use this clamp, this longer clamp, to prop up that side of the bow. Um, and so by doing that, we'll probably have to add a little bit of spacers and whatnot to make sure that it holds into place and doesn't just fall out like that. But the idea being is that we can prop up the opposite side of the boat that is sitting too low. And then we'll just make adjustments that way until we have everything nice and neat. Now that the dinghy was stitched together and we'd removed any twisting in the hull, we needed to epoxy grout the joints in the inside to help the hull hold its shape. First, we mixed wood filler and epoxy until it had a thick, peanut butter-like consistency. The thicker, the better. The manual mentions two ways you can fill at the hull, and we chose to do the spot pulling method, which involves filleting a bead of epoxy between each plastic tie, waiting for it to be fully cured, giving it a good 24 to 36 hours at least, and then cutting the ties and filleting over the whole thing. a day ago we let it dry. We finished the temporary fillets, we're calling them, which is with the epoxy with the uh, wood filler mixed into a peanut butter consistency. Um, so we did that on all the little um, seams here and let, let that cure. Now we're going to do the less temporary fillets by first taking out all of our zip ties, which I'm a little nervous about. <laughs> Once we do that, we're going to start the next step, which is mixing up more epoxy and wood filler and laying that down and then laying the uh, witch noodle, what do you call it? It's the uh, three inch, six ounce glass tape. Yes, the fiberglass tape, right? Mm -hmm. So we'll show you that. So in our last step, we put in the temporary fillets, which is just some epoxy and wood flour mixed together. Uh, and we put in the temporary ones in between our zip ties. Uh, we didn't mix the, the filleting grout thick enough last time, so we kind of dripped a bunch, so we ended up letting it cure uh, completely, which we needed to because they were just temp, you know, to replace the zip ties. Um, so we had to do some sanding because the edges were quite, quite rough. And as you can see, our next step is going to have us running a fillet all the way down the chines and laying glass in on that seam. So we had to sand it because we want this glass to be able to lay as flush to the contour of the boat as possible. Um, and so uh, when we're basically done, we'll have a layer of glass and a nice thick uh, fillet running the length of the chines and we'll also do the same thing with the bow piece and the transom piece and then after that cures and is set up we'll be able to start fitting in the bulkheads filleting those into place as well uh, it'll be a similar process on those where we'll zip tie them in place and use some temporary fillets and working our way back towards the transom. Uh, so yeah, really quickly, uh, I noticed some dust and some dirt. So we're gonna vacuum out the inside of the boat really well. 
and then we'll start laying the fillets and laying the glass. In the manual, JF notes that you want to lay down the, the fillet uh, as you're working your way. You don't press too hard so that you're scraping the material out, but you just kind of find a groove where you're laying in just enough material and not and trying to flatten it nice and smooth. And then when you're laying the glass down, what you really want to do is just lay the glass down gently, but yet making sure that it is adhering to that grout line. You probably don't want to mash it down with your fingers because that could be problematic. Um, and then basically just laying the glass into place so that it won't move and then wetting the glass with clear epoxy uh, and just working your way from one either forward to aft or aft to forward just to get it wet and down into place uh, it will accept a lot of epoxy uh, to bond properly you want to make sure that you get everything coated but essentially you're not trying to wet the glass in one fell swoop that work from one end to the other let it saturate while you're working your way across and then the dry spots will be obvious because they'll be very white still uh, when there's enough epoxy impregnated in the glass it goes clear and or clearer more opaque i guess uh, so that's that's the tip he recommends lightly laying it down to where the grout is, is bonded with the glass and then working your way with wetting it out um, methodically forward to act. Uh, so we're about to mix up some more epoxy grout. I um, wanted to point out a few quick things. Uh, JF Bedard on BedardYacht.com, uh, they sell these filleting tools. Um, it comes cut out of a CNC uh, and you just pop the ones that you need for the size fillets. Uh, for most of the project we're going to be using this 3 8 fillet, but since our temporary fillets were so wide, we've gone with the inch uh, filleting tool um, to fill what we have here. It had we had thinner uh, temporary fillets, we would have opted to go with the 3 eighths, but this will finish. It'll be nice and strong. It'll look good when it's all said and done. We didn't have a lot of extra space to prep the bulkhead pieces while we were working on the hull, so we waited to do this step separately. If you have the room, I highly recommend just getting a coat of epoxy on these while you're working. Here you'll see me sanding any stray burrs on the wood before we had coated them. What we'll be doing today, especially with these pieces, the bulkhead doublers, is we'll be rolling on some epoxy on this side and then onto the surface of the actual bulkhead that it'll be mounted to. Uh, so we'll get a little bit of epoxy on each side and clamp these pieces together like so, uh, making sure that everything's aligned. And then the rest of our bulkhead pieces we'll be doing a similar thing, we'll be throwing a top coat on the seat, uh, th these are for the rear seat, uh, as well as these need to be epoxy together, which these are mounts for the back seat as well as the back bulkhead, uh, starboard aft bulkhead. Um, and then we've got our other half of our bulkheads that have a little bit more complex because the way the seats mount, the rear seats that run along the edge of the boat, they are removable so that when things nest, these seats here on the plans pop out. Um, so yeah, we have to kind of assemble all of these pieces together uh, by laminating them together with some epoxy. Uh, then after all of that cures, we'll be able to throw another coat or two on this side, and then we'll flip everything over, get a couple of coats of epoxy on them, and then they'll get filleted into the hull at a, later this week. Next, we needed to sand and then fit in the bulkheads so that we could stitch and glue them into place. We'll make sure that everything is aligned properly, and sometimes we needed to sand certain areas as the filleting has slightly changed the shape of the hull. 
once the center bulkhead was in place, we then put in the support beams that run under the removable seats to help align the aft bulkhead. We just cut out strips of glass for filleting and glassing the bulkheads. Uh, we decided to cut smaller sections, obviously, because we have some angles in here, so that just will help laying down uh, a strip so that it sits fairly flush without getting too bubbly around those corners. On this bulkhead, since we still need to mount the centerboard, which the parts have been glassed and they're being cleaned up, we're gonna just only work from about this spot back uh, as far as filleting and glassing. That'll give us some room to fit the centerboard trunk and then also it'll allow us then to glass everything and fill it in place kind of in one section on that side. So yeah, that's it. We're just gonna work our way from the front bulkhead all the way aft. All right, so uh, we've gone ahead and put a couple of coats of epoxy on our centerboard trunk pieces. Uh, it leveled a little bit wonky in a few spots, so what we're gonna to do today is sand back some of those high spots, as well as sand the sides that are gonna receive the centerboard trunk parts so that we have a nice level surface for that. Um, and we're gonna assemble one half of the centerboard so that when we leave today, we'll have this all kind of clamped together as you see here uh, so that when after that cures then we can we can fit this side in place and we'll have a complete centerboard trunk which will be ready to install the one thing that we're going to do differently for each side of the centerboard is this larger piece will be easy to work with there's a lot of surface area and to make sure that everything is nice and watertight and waterproof, we're gonna lay unthickened epoxy along this edge before we set it in place, and then we'll clamp it down and fill it along this edge. Uh, and that will make sure that everything's assembled well and is nice and durable and waterproof. However, on this side, this piece, it's a little bit more fiddly given its size. Um, as you might be able to tell, you might not, but it's already not laying flush, it's really thin. So instead of trying to work with this too much, we'll just go ahead and get this sanded down and assembled in a manner in which we want to have this piece set. We'll get it flushed up and clamped and then we'll just add a fillet along this edge instead of trying to wet this side. Uh, it works out just fine because this is the side that runs up along the bulkhead. So when we do all the finishing and inserting it in the bulkhead, if we need to, we could add some epoxy to the back side, which will make it more waterproof. Um, so it's just not gonna give us that much extra to make sure that we have a nice good tight seal on that edge. So. All right, so as we had mentioned, just kind of our plan of attack, just wanted to kind of show how we solved a couple of riddles. Um, really, this side was no big deal. We did exactly what we said, which was we put on a thin layer of unthickened epoxy. We then clamped the piece into place and then ran a fillet in that corner. Um, that's pretty straightforward. The difficult side was this thinner piece of wood. Obviously the clamps want to flex it. It's also not being completely fit into place. So maybe if we had a piece of wood or something, we might've been able to kind of finagle something a little bit better, but had we covered it too much, it also then would have been very difficult to fill it. So what we decided to do, as you can see, we've got this taping situation happening which is to kind of help keep the board in place we're kind of counterbalancing it cantilevering it we've got the clamps in place 
And then I just put in about a two inch temporary fillet on this side. And then a couple of little one inch ones right here. So essentially in the next 24 hours, that'll set up. Uh, it'll be nice and stiff. We can remove the tape and the clamps. And after we do that, we can put a thicker fillet in place and then that's not, that's not going anywhere. Um, so I feel good about that, but that's how we solve that problem. Maybe if we had some better clamps or some better materials, there might, there might be another solution. I'm certainly open to hearing that. Uh, but yeah, that's just, this is working. So we feel good about it. When we installed the centerboard trunk, we realized that the smaller side pieces could be laminated together with just epoxy. So we sanded back the filleting we'd put inside earlier. For good measure, we drizzled in some epoxy on the inside and outside seams. Next, we laminated the centerboard trunk in two steps. So the first step will be to simply laminate this back edge with epoxy, just standard epoxy, not thickened with the grout, so that the back edge is flush. Uh, what I'm seeing here is that we've got a gap slightly on the forward edge of the center board. And I think that that gap is coming from the fact that the center bulkhead doesn't have the seat yet attached to it. Uh, and there might be a little bit of flex in there. So my goal is to get this laminated in place. I'm also gonna make sure that all of the edges on that bottom, which I've already looked at, they're fairly square, so I don't think there's anything impeding it from sitting in the right spot. So I just think that there's probably a little bit of flex uh, in the bulkhead that we can then take out once that's laminated in place by running our zip tie through the hole where there's joining holes and through this other set which came pre-drilled from Bedard Yacht Designs. So yeah, my goal is to get it laminated in place and we'll see how much of that gap we can take out once that epoxy has cured overnight. Once it's cured, it really isn't gonna pop. My hope is that that less than an eighth of an inch is all just flex and that it'll flex out of the hull. I'm also gonna do some alignment with the seat before I really fully make that determination. Or if I'll, And then if there's really no room to pull that eighth of an inch gap it together, so, uh, and then when we cut the hull uh, for the center board, we'll just round off any grout and clean it up and glass it over. So we'll, we'll be able to fill that gap in from both sides. Since we decided to leave the seats bright, we'll put on three coats of a two-part polyester epoxy on the seats. We also align and fillet the center board, later adding another fillet layer and then zip tying it into place. After we epoxied a couple coats inside the aft bulkhead areas, we installed the center seat which proved to be a little tricky for us. Because it's hard to reach these areas, we put in the temporary fillets for now, and later, after we cut the boat in half, we'll prop up the bow on the floor and have an easier time with filleting these hard to reach spaces. For the bow section, we use a couple pieces of oak strips to create limber tubes to connect the drain holes. Basically, a triangle or a tent, an A-frame that'll run over that area, uh, this will, will receive multiple coats of epoxy and will be epoxied into place so that it, it creates a channel for any water that comes over the bow to just run aft where we can bail it. Uh, that will also leave this area, we could either put in styrofoam for flotation, but I think what we might do is leave it open and add an access port here or maybe even from the bow side depending upon how the seat fits in so that we can have a dry storage area. Squeedly boop, squeedly pop pop. No? You don't want me, you don't want me to do that? <laughs> That's for your future scat album or something. You mean poop. Your poop album? Yeah, scat. 
all about scatological. Yes, yes it is. Thanks for watching. Check out our fourth and final video when we flip the hull over and eventually cut the nesting dinghy in half.